The number one, clearly number one book that has impacted my Christian walk more than any other is Hello friends, this is a video on the top 10 Christian books that have impacted my spiritual walk the most. This isn't the top 10 Christian books of all time because I would have had to have read all the books to be able to make a judgment on that. This is simply the books that have impacted me the most. I'm going to present them in no particular order, however the last three are my top three favourites. So the first book is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. This is a 1952 book, an apologetics classic. It's all about defending the Christian faith, the, the core basis of the Christian faith that all um, traditional Christians believe. And it does so in a very deep, convincing, philosophical manner in a way that only C.S. Lewis can. I do enjoy a number of his other books also. I have a couple of quotes from the book here. When you argue against him, which is God, you are arguing against the very power that makes you able to argue at all. It is like cutting off the branch you are sitting on. And one more, if the whole universe has no meaning, we should never have found out that it has no meaning. Just as if there were no light in the universe and therefore no creatures with eyes, we should never know it was dark. Dark would be without meaning such depth in his writing. Love C.S. Lewis books. The second book on my list is John Bunyan's The Pilgrim Progress, 1678. It is a Christian allegory which describes the story of, of a good man who goes from the city of destruction, which is here on earth, to the celestial city, to heaven, and it shows all the adventures and troubles and tribulations in between. It is so pertinent to the Christian life and you will resonate with the different things that happen along the journey. This was written by Bunyan when he was actually imprisoned for his faith and it is a wonderful work. I have one quote here from the book. This hill, though high, I covet to ascend, the difficulty will not me offend, for I perceive the way to life lies here Come pluck up heart, let's neither faint nor fear. Better though difficult the right way to go, than wrong though easy where the end is woe. And you can get that in more modern English if you prefer that. Another book on this list is Smith Wigglesworth's collection of, of works and his sermons. Now this is a controversial figure. He's a, he's a Pentecostal, um, he was a faith healer. Um, but his works are so deep and I don't mind going to, to any particular denomination or author if the truths that are there resonate with me and impact me to have greater faith and to become more like Christ. Um, he was very direct, he was very uncompromising in his message and the core of his message was, is only believe. Um, these works are from the, the early to the mid 1900s. Uh, some of his quotes include God is more eager to answer than we are to ask. And some people like to read their Bibles in Hebrew, some in Greek. I like to read mine in the Holy Ghost. Whenever I read his uncompromising style, it gives me a boldness and it enlarges my faith. And I'm very blessed to have read these works. The next one on the list is actually another collection of books by Corrie Ten Boom. Uh, this volume that I have includes The Hiding Place, Tramp for the Lord, and Jesus is Victor. Uh, Corrie ten Boom was a Dutch woman who would, um, would hide Jews from uh, arrest and deportation during the German occupation of the Netherlands. Uh, she and her family were arrested. They were put into concentration camps. Her sister died there, and Corrie ten Boom was actually released from Ravensbrück by a clerical uh, um, error. She went on then to preach as an itinerant preacher and to write numerous volumes of books which are really, really impactful, sharing on her own experiences of forgiveness and pain and, and the light of Christ in the darkest of places. I'm not one that um, believes that women are to be preachers in the church. That's another topic for another video. 
but someone like this who is an itinerant speaker speaking on their experiences from what they went through in the concentration camp is, is something that's very beneficial um, for the body of believers to hear. Um, and some of the quotes that she has I've got here below. Um, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorry, sorrows, it empties today of its strength. Forgiveness is an act of the will and can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Any concern too small to be turned into prayer is too small to be made into a burden. I love her works. I love reading these and would put her alongside some of the great women in the faith like your Elizabeth Elliots and people that have just given such depth and God glorifying works. The next one is really just a, a bunch of books. I love to read Christian biographies because biographies are real stories which, uh, which stir us to a greater level of faith because of, we see what people have, have gone and done. And these touch me so much. Some of my favorite ones are Heavenly Man by Brother Yun, um, Keith Green, No Compromise. I mentioned Cory Ten Boon, The Hiding Place, um, and The Cross and the Switchblade by David Wilkerson. Those are just a few of the biographies that have shaped me and increased my faith. And there are so many more that I want to read. And there are so many great biographies out there. The next on the list, again, is an author who has a number of great books. A.W. Tozer, who wrote around the middle of the 20th century. A number of his absolute classic books include uh, The Pursuit of God, The Knowledge of the Holy, Man the Dwelling Place of God, Delighting in God and the Crucified Life. And he was such a, a deep, insightful and, and penetrating author and speaker that spoke mainly on the inner life and also spoke a lot on the condition of the church. One of his quotes that I love is that what comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. This man was way ahead of his time and he identified the condition of the church which didn't resemble that which we see um, in the early church. And one of his other quotes is that the church rises or falls altogether depending on her view of God. He was all about the secret place. He was all about seeing God clearer and how everything in the inner life transforms when we see God clearer and we align ourselves with the word. You can't go wrong with any A.W. Tozer book, but as I said, the two most popular are The Pursuit of God and The Knowledge of the Holy. Another one on the list is Andrew Murray, an author rather than a specific book because he has so many books. Um, he's a South African preacher and writer who lived in the 19th century, the early part of the 20th century, and believed that missions was the chief end of the church. In terms of the scope and the number of books written, Andrew Murray is, is probably my favorite, and you can't go wrong with any of his books. Some of, his, some of my favorites that I've read include uh, Absolute Surrender, Humility, and um, Waiting on God. His works are just so deep. They're all about the, the inner life of man again. Um, and he just penetrates to that depth of what is possible in Christ. Any book that you want to pick up on Andrew Murray, you can't go too wrong. A couple of Andrew Murray's quotes include, Jesus gave up his life to God and by this he taught us that the only thing that life worth living for is to give back to God even unto death. And also, there is no choice for us. We must either deny self or deny Christ. Deliverance from self-life means to be a vessel overflowing with love to everybody all day. Wow. So now I'm going to count down the top three books that have impacted me the most over my journey. The first one is The Collected Works on Prayer by E.M. Bounds. The most famous book in this collection is Power Through Prayer, written in 1910. I'm going to read the back of this book. It says here that since the time of the apostles, no man besides Bounds has left such a rich inheritance of biblical research into the life of prayer. He spoke about the necessity of prayer and he spoke about the purpose behind prayer and how a man, before he does any, any great works for God, must be a man grounded in prayer so that that vital force of life is just uh, moving through him. Um, he's got a couple of quotes here that I love. 
The church is looking for better methods, but God is looking for better men. And also, what the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more novel methods, but men whom the Holy Spirit can use. Men of prayer, men mighty in prayer. The Holy Ghost does not flow through methods, but through men. He does not come on machinery, but on men. He does not anoint plans, but men, men of prayer. If you want to read about prayer, E.M. Bounds, The Power Through Prayer, you've got to start there. Book number two, The Christian Secret of a Happy Life by Hannah Whittle Smith. Now, disclaimer here. There were some things about her theology that are not Christian Orthodox in terms of she believed in universalism. And she was also a woman, a woman preacher, which um, is not biblical, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm purely talking about the content of this book and the impact that it has on me. It's not a theological book. It is a practical book that shows people the struggles that Christians have and the way to live the higher life. This book is all about living that higher life where you're living in that place of victory in Christ. And it shows you exactly how to do this. This book was a light bulb moment for me about four years ago that completely transformed my perspective. I can't tell you how much it did this. This, this entire book is full of gems and it is well worth reading despite some of the, the theological problems with this author. One of her quotes here is, You have trusted him as your dying saviour, now trust him as your living saviour. Just as much as he came to deliver you from future punishment, did he come to deliver you from present bondage? Just as truly as he came to bear your stripes for you, he has come to live your life for you. That is so profound and this book is full of that. This was um, what she said when she grasped the truth of some of these revelations. My troubles disappeared like magic and I did nothing but wonder how I could have ever been such an idiot to be troubled by them. When all the while there was God, the almighty, the all-seeing God who created me and was therefore on my side, eager to care for me and help me, I found out that God was enough and my soul was at rest. And this is exactly what I can testify to after learning some of the revelations of this book. It is well worth the read. The number one clearly number one book that has impacted my Christian walk more than any other is The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. This Christian devotional book was written between 1418 and 1427, roughly, and is a handbook for Christian living. It's a devotional style. It's a book divided four separate little, little books within this one book. And, and the chapters are very small and, and easy to read. Devotional style where you could sit on a chapter for a half hour and still not get all the depth out of it. The key to this book is the penetrating depth, the, 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 the life-giving force in, in the author's words. He understands the human condition and he presents biblical truth in a way so that we can grow closer to God so that we can endure our present trials with joy and we can have our mind fixed on the big picture. We cannot be distracted about what's going on around us with other people, but we can tend to ourselves and we can grow in Christ to the degree that we're willing to be, to have simplicity in our purpose and purity of heart. This is the greatest book I've ever read outside the Bible and I would highly recommend it. The one thing about this book is that this author does talk about the monastic life and about being isolated. We can learn a lot of truths during this time when we are isolated in devotion, but we are to be in the world, but not of the world. And that's the one area where this book falls short. But you can take the applications from this book and apply them to all areas of life. This is a must read. If you don't have it, go out and get it. There are different, to, different to translations in terms of more modern language or not all over the internet. So get this book today. So I trust that this video has been helpful for you. As you can see, I read books from a number of eras and nothing really um, in terms of modern literature. There is so much 
great literature out there from years gone by and I love to just devour this sort of stuff. It is so rich and it is so deep. As you can also see, I go into a deep range of theological perspectives from authors, which has blessed me enormously and helped me in forming my own perspectives. I was able to take the good out of what, what um, I liked in these books and able to reject the parts that I didn't agree with. I think reading a broad range of authors is so great in terms of getting a greater overall biblical perspective. So that's my list of books. There are plenty more that I could have listed, but that's 10 for now. So look those up, do a bit of a search, look at reviews. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And certainly if you want to uh, give any recommendations, make sure you put them in the comments below also. Thank you, friends. We'll talk to you soon.